So let's, um, I just want to read one verse and then we'll pray. I just want to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, um, verse, verses 9 onwards, 9 to 12, right? 9 onwards. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed um, them to us through his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God ex except the Spirit of God. Verse 12, Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Okay, so one of the reasons for which uh, the Holy Spirit indwells us, the Holy Spirit has been given to us, right? To reveal those things, to teach us those things, um, whatever eye has not seen or ear has not heard, nor have entered into the heart of man. Okay, that is verse 9. So, so which means eye, it's a physical organ, ear, again, physical organ, right? Nor have entered into the heart of man, meaning even into the, uh, you know, the spirit of man, things have not been revealed yet. But the Holy Spirit, he has come. God reveals them to us through his spirit. Okay, so God reveals by his spirit. Verse 12, we have received the Holy Spirit that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Okay, so we have this awesome privilege. There have been... A lot of things that have been given to us freely in Christ right, by the Father, and we have received as new creations. Okay. These have been freely given to us. These are gifts that have been given to us. Now the Holy Spirit reveals them to us. And He's going to show us, even as we journey with Him, He's going to show us what are those things that have been freely given to us. right? Um, and uh, so that we might know them. So that's one of the things that God wants to know those things that have been freely given to us. He wants to wants us to know. And the reason for that is he wants us to, you know, not just be ignorant of it, but to know it and to walk in it. Right? It could be spiritual authority, it could be identity, it could be, you know, any other thing. Uh, the, the mysteries of the gospel, the uh, the gifts about the gifts, about power, about character, about nature, you know, how to walk victoriously. Uh, and, and other things personally as well, right? Personally, okay, I, I don't know what the future holds, and you know, but God wants to reveal them to us by His Spirit. Okay, and these things are freely given to us. Now, it's not that we have to do something to earn it, these have been freely given to us because we are in Christ. Right? So that's great news, that's that's amazing news, right? So as we pray today, uh, let's pray and ask the Lord to reveal something. You know, one aspect of something that have been freely given to us. You know, it might be so personal to you, so you know, it might be your need, and um, you know, something that's been weighing on you. So, even as we pray, uh, as we pray in the Spirit, you know, as we pray in in tongues, uh, we can ask the Holy Spirit to reveal the, uh, these things to us. Right. So, just ask, you know, God, you reveal, you know, something. What is that thing that that did you want me to know today? that thing that has been freely given to me in Christ, that has been freely you know, uh, given to me by God, I want to know that, right? By the Father that has been, that has been uh, freely given. So um, it could be some deep spiritual truth, you know, some, some answers to some question that you've been seeking, uh, you've been asking God, and uh, it could be anything, but the Holy Spirit can absolutely surprise us and reveal that to us, right? So let's, uh, let's pray. Uh, if you want to stand up and pray, you can. If you want to walk and pray, that's fine. Online class, the same thing goes. You know, you just, just want to spend uh, a few minutes in prayer. So uh, whatever posture, you know, if you want to stand, if you want to walk, if you want to pray, but just get intense, right? Get intentional and get intense about this and say, God, you know, um, I'm praying. 
uh, I'm seeking you um, and just go ahead and pray in the spirit. And even as you pray, even as you pray in the spirit, you know, pray that, um, pray for, for, so you can hear yourself loudly, right? Uh, loud enough so you can hear, but it's just between you and God, right? It's just between you and God, but pray loud enough so you can hear. Let deep cry unto deep. You know, let there be a hunger, let there be an intense desire for him. You know, he, uh, he loves us and he chose us. And uh, there's a rich deposit of his word that he wants to, you know, wants to put. And uh, uh, there are other things that he wants to show and reveal. So let's pray. Yes, Lord, show us. Open my eyes to see you. Open my eyes to hear you. Oh, you know, like we um, so last week, you know, just be mindful of uh, even as you pray, just be mindful of the things that uh, God is speaking to you, right? Uh, mindful of uh, what he's impressing, mindful of what he's showing, uh, mindful of uh, anything that he's quickening to your heart. Um, so lay a hold of that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Yes, Yes, Father God, she may came to you, she may be in the interior of the city, Papa. Her almost semi came to you, was she may be in the interior of the city, Papa. Thank you, Lord, bless your name. Thank you, God, you bless me. Heavy may be very almost in the interior of the city, Papa, 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 Hey, Muslim. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Let's just sing it and just worship the Lord. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. 
For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Day and night, night and day, let incense arise. Day and night, night and day, let incense arise. Day and night, night and day, let incense arise. Day and night, night and day, let incense arise. You're worthy of it all, O oh God. You're worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. Yes, you deserve the glory. Hallelujah. We bless your name, O oh God. Yes, Lord, all that we are, all that we have, oh God, is everything is from you, Father God. You are the source of life itself, Lord. You are the giver of good gifts, oh Father God. Lord, we bless your name this morning, oh God. We, as we draw near, oh Father God, we bless your name, oh Father God. Lord, we thank you that you are a generous God. We thank you that you give without holding back, oh Father God. We thank you this morning, oh God, for all the things that we have freely received, Lord, because we are in Christ, O oh God, even as your word declares, O oh God, that he who gave his only begotten son, will he not freely give you all things? And Father God, we thank you for those things that you've given us, O oh God. We thank you that we are blessed with all the spiritual blessings in the heavenly places, O oh Father God. We thank you, O oh God, that you blessed us with your very presence itself, O oh Father God. We thank you that you blessed us with your word, O oh Father God. We thank you that you blessed us, O oh God, and clothed us, O oh God, with your righteousness, O oh God. Father God. We thank you, O oh God, that you washed us with your precious blood, O oh Father God. We thank you, O oh Master God, Lord, for the, all the resources that you've given us, O oh God. We thank you for all the spiritual weapons, O oh God, that you, Lord, given us, O oh God, freely, O oh God. We thank you, O oh Master. We thank you for each and every one of them, O oh God. We, th we thank you. We bless your name, Lord. We bless your name, O oh Father God. And Father God, we just want to thank you that you are the spirit of revelation and wisdom. And you open our eyes and reveal things to us, O oh God, which we cannot know, Lord, by our own means, O oh Father God. Yes, Lord, you, Lord, write upon our hearts, O oh God, the things, O oh God, that we have not yet entered our hearts, O oh God. Lord, the things that is not possible, O oh God, in the natural realm, O oh God, through our natural faculties, O oh God. O oh God, you reveal to us, O oh God, by your spirit, O oh God. We just want to thank you. We just want to thank you. We bless your name for it, O oh God. We thank you, Lord. You are the faithful God. And you're calling us, O oh God, in consecration, O oh God, for consecration, O oh God, yeah, Lord, to live a consecrated life, O oh God. You're calling us, O oh God, to live, O oh God, lives of obedience, God. You're calling us, O oh God, to live lives, O oh God, of faithfulness, O oh Father God. Oh, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we bless your name. Yes, Lord, we place ourselves in your hands, O oh Father God. We, Lord, posture ourselves, O oh God, we position ourselves, O oh God, to hear your word, O oh Father God to hear your voice, O oh Master God. Yes, Lord, I pray that the voice of the shepherd, Lord, your voice, O oh God, will be louder than any other voice, O oh God. Will be louder than the voice of the flesh, O oh God. Will be louder than the voice of the world, O oh Father God. Will be louder than the voice of fear and intimidation. Lord, will be louder than the voice of fear and anxiety and cares of this world, O oh God. And then the burdens of this world. Lord, we pray, O oh Father God, that we will not be distracted, God, but we'll, Lord, our focus will be upon you you, O oh God, that what you are, who you are, and Lord, that our the focus will be on you, O oh Master, your face, your presence, O oh God. Yes, Lord, even as we run this race, you've called us, O oh God, Lord, looking unto Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. We thank you. We bless your name. We give you all the praise and all the glory at this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's take your seats, guys. God bless. Yeah, praise God, you know, is, uh, when we have such an awesome God, um, we don't have to fear. Um, we don't have to live in fear and anxiety. You know, we can cast our cares upon him. We can give him our burdens. 
it's not that we you know we, we do pick up our burdens we do pick up you know uh, whatever worries but then we can give them to god we can give them to him because he says i will carry it right and um, and the thing is so many things because of his grace we have received right uh, and uh, we didn't earn it we didn't it, it's not because we reached a level of spiritual maturity or uh, you know level of righteousness uh, scripture says not by our works right? it's, it's by his grace so he has given us and he has given us the teacher the author of the scriptures who will actually lead us on a journey of discovering like discovering what it is that he's given us right so praise god amen yeah awesome Okay, um, so we start with that question. <laughs> I've not forgotten that. We start with a question which we asked uh, Pastor Rinchen and Saint Francis and others. Um, what is that question? Yeah, so we asked it a little differently in a sense. Mm. Yeah, so so let's say uh, a believer asked this question. You know. Um, you know, okay, I believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but do I really need tongues? You know, are tongues really an evidence? Uh, I believe that I'm baptized, I have other gifts. So what would you tell that person, or you as a person who has okay, learned all this and, you know, uh, maybe you're a spiritual leader. Um, so what will you tell that person if so, there is such a query? Okay, so online class also. Um, so what will you tell that person? You had a week to think about it. Come on. You, you still have that question. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Prince, what do you say? Um, okay, something, uh, you, you guys can put it on the chat, for those of you who want to. Um, yeah. So it's a valid question, first of all. You know, it's a valid question. People are saying, okay, see, I'm accepted as I am, right? So so there's no problem with that. I'm not a second class citizen just because I don't pray in tongues. So I'm I'm a you know a first class citizen of heaven. I've been accepted, washed by the blood of Jesus. So, you know, and uh, he dwells me and I've been baptized, but for some reason, you know, I'm not started speaking in tongues and I'm asking, you know. Is it necessary? You know, is it important? You know, have the other gifts. You know, so what would you say? Yeah, Nina. Mm. It's so easy in the sense. Um, mm. Okay, you can pray about so many other things and etc. Okay, so you'll talk about the 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 advantages of praying in tongues. Okay, um, okay. So you you, ex you I mean I, I guess you'll actually explain about why tongues, right? Why why tongues is there in the first place, the gift of tongues, and uh, and the advantages of it. Um, yeah, so what else can you share with that person? Right. Sorry? It's something that Satan cannot understand. OK. OK, uh, I don't know, but uh, yeah, OK. Satan doesn't, cannot understand. What else would you say? Mm -hmm. If you pray in tongues, then it will build up the other spiritual gifts. Huh? See, one of the, th the th things that we see is 1 Corinthians 14 talks about how when we pray in tongues, we are being edified. We are being personally built up, right? Uh, and we're going to look at um, yeah, the other uh, 
kinds of tongues and so yeah so it is so, so yeah, yeah. Uh, okay so chaya says it helps us to have more faith and trust and become more spiritual so so yeah so we can talk about the advantages you can talk about the the gift itself you know what the gift uh, why god intended this gift for us right and um, we can go back to scripture and talk about um, like what we saw all those five instances when we when we look at the promise of the father when we look at the baptism of the holy spirit we see that there are direct references to praying in tongues okay so for whatever reason we have disconnected that you know in the church over the years from the baptism of the holy spirit even we have disconnected that from you know the normal life of a believer right so this these are all new believers these could be mature believers these could be people who are journeyed with christ i mean with with god for a long time um but all those five instances that we saw we saw that it is a normal life of the church right so uh, so we can actually dispel any kind of fears that they might have normally when a person asks that question right they, they might have some fears they might have some prejudices about praying in tongues right they might have had, they might have seen something they might have heard about something they uh, you know there's there's usually something right like uh, for example i i remember once talking to um uh, a, a believer after church after service and that particular day we had a, a ministry time for uh, what we call as the holy spirit baptism service right people stay back there's a teaching and ministry so this person said um, you know uh, he said i i just want to focus on character i don't want anything to do with the gifts i just want to focus on character and that's it right? so gently i just had to show him 1 corinthians 14 and verse 1 which says pursue love and desire spiritual gifts so for him like he had had a bad experience right bad experience because of other believers because of whatever uh, bad experience with the gifts itself you know with the gifts of the spirit uh, probably the ones who were ministering in the gifts you know did it in a way that was hurtful whatever you know? so he had a he had a history to you know uh, that was actually preventing him from stepping in okay um, so we could we could ask that question. You know, why why do you ask this question? Some people have fears, right? Uh, what if something else happens? What if something else jumps in, right? Because some some fears, or uh, and like that funny story. You know, uh, one person said uh, because this person asked in the church, you know, can I pray for you to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and praying in tongues and and so on. And this person said, uh, "No, you know, today I have a, you know, I have a sprain in my neck. I don't think I can receive." So, which means that person has seen somebody, you know, like shaking their head and you know, all that uh, connected with baptism of the Holy Spirit. So he said, "No, today actually, my I have got an explain. I don't think I can handle that." Right. So all kinds of wrong beliefs, wrong thinking, all kinds of fears, right? prejudices about that. Uh, so we just need to point that you know address those fears okay and and also point to the fact that uh, our father is is a giver of good gifts right you know when uh, when the lord jesus says right if a father asks for a bread would he give a stone if a son asks for a i'm sorry if a son asks for a bread to the father or if a son asks for fish would you give him a snake or, you know anything that is um, you know not healthy for him or dangerous for him no and if you see the context is uh, with holy spirit you know about the holy spirit right so how much more will the father give good gifts right so um, so just to put out those fears The normal way we have. Yes. Okay. Yeah, Nina. I just see that. Okay. So, uh, so we can, you know, talk about that. We can um, uh, basically explain why and and put out all those fears. Okay. So let's um, uh, address some other questions. Okay. So the question is, 
is speaking in tongues, you know, I'm just following the notes here, uh, uh, baptism of the Holy Spirit, is speaking in tongues the evidence of baptism in the Holy Spirit? Is speaking in tongues the proof of a person being baptized in the Holy Spirit? What do you think? Yes. Anybody saying no? Okay. <laughs> so why do you say no? It's not the evidence. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, Anand's uh, response is okay. Uh, that is not the only evidence because we see that the other gifts also can be manifest, right? Because all these nine gifts come with this Holy Spirit, and He's the one who is, uh, you know, who's baptizing. I mean, He's the one you're baptized with Him. Or he is, uh, you know, he's, uh, the Lord Jesus is baptizing in the Holy Spirit. So uh, he's the giver of the gifts. He's got all the gifts. Okay, so he releases these gifts. Okay, so the point—that's a good point in the sense, you know, when we when we read uh, sorry, Acts chapter nineteen, we looked at the efficient uh, the believers in the efficient church in Ephesus, right? So um, they prayed in tongues and they prophesied. Okay, so which means. Prophecy can also be a gift that is that could be released. Word of knowledge could be a gift that could be released. Word of wisdom could be a gift that could be released. But in all those five instances, we see direct or indirect references to to what to gift of tongues. Okay, so we can see that. Okay, uh, we can conclude that. Okay, yes, it is an evidence. But no, it need not be. Right? If praying in tongues is an evidence, is the evidence from, from the scriptures that we saw, but it need not be also because there could be other gifts that could be manifest. Okay. But our response should be, you know, if there, somebody asks us a question, our response should be to encourage the person to pursue, to expect to pray in tongues, to encourage the person. To pursue because uh, in 1 Corinthians 14 it talks about plural pursue love and desire spiritual gifts it's plural so tongues is one of the gifts so pursue that right and when we look at the benefits of praying in tongues benefits of that, of that gift the Lord wants the believer to be strong in it. The Lord wants to do something. The Lord wants the believer to be edified, right? And you're praying the mysteries, uh, and you're going to be looking at that, uh, you know, a uh, little more detail today. So when you look at all that, yes, why don't you expect? Why don't you pursue? You know, that should be our response. You know, we're not just focusing on tongues and you know, leaving other things out. No, but it's a, it's a basic thing. Don't miss out. Right. It's not like you're a, you know, the others who speak in tongues have something and then sub special and you don't. No, it's not like that. But since it's available, go for it. Go all out. Don't hold back. Okay. So that, you know, is a is a response. It could be our response. Okay. okay. Well, another question. The Lord Jesus said to the disciples, He said, "Wait in Jerusalem." Tarry in Jerusalem, you know that old English word, tarry in Jerusalem till you are filled with power on high. So they waited, they were in prayer, they were in one accord, and this happened. They were baptized in the Holy Spirit. So should we also wait or tarry maybe three days, five days, maybe a month in order to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? What do you think? If you are saying yes, why? If you're saying no, no, why? Sorry? Yeah, you are asking and waiting. No, should, should we wait? See, because the, no, asking is fine because we are, we are asking. Yeah, so should we always? No, it's not the question of uh, you know, not expecting or not asking. We're paying and asking, but the, 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 the thing is this, you know, should we wait? Because Jesus said wait, tarry. So should we wait three days, five days, seven days, whatever, in order to be filled with the Holy Spirit, you know, fasting and praying and waiting? And... 
maybe maybe not huh? <laughs> maybe not okay okay see uh, the first um, instance that we see acts chapter 2 the lord asked them to wait in jerusalem they they waited and they were filled with the holy spirit and lord had a purpose in that okay so it was a feast of pentecost and uh, people from all over the surrounding regions had come to Jerusalem, and uh, and the first church was born. You know, at that time, they filled and people. It was a witness to the church. It was witness to the Jews. Right? Something supernatural had happened. There was this outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and as a result of that, Peter shared Acts chapter two, verse thirty-eight, thirty-nine. You know, we see that response. You know, like he's saying, "This is what you must do." And we see the huge numbers that actually added to the church. So the Lord had a purpose in you know, them waiting for that Kairos moment, right? For the outpouring of the spirit and for, for them to be filled and the church to be born, birthed, and all that. Um, after that, we don't see that. They're waiting for one particular moment. No. Peter and John. Go to Samaria. Philip had already preached the gospel. People are already believers. They laid hands, prayed, they were filled. Same thing. Ananias goes, visits Saul. He's born again. Uh, he, he prays, and then his something like scales fall off his eyes. He receives his sight, and it says he was baptized. Now we don't know whether he prayed, but we know that eventually he started praying. If he did not at that time, Acts chapter ten, Cornelius' house. It was just preaching, they are hearing the word, they are receiving the word, and they are filled with the Holy Spirit. Right? Acts chapter 19, efficient believer, elders, or believers, sorry. Um, Peter, I mean, sorry, Paul goes there, he teaches them about the Holy Spirit, he gets them water baptized first, and then he prays, they are filled. Right? So, uh, so that is the thing. You know, this tarrying, it had its place in the the first instance when we read about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, but this was the reason, right? God had a reason for uh, for them to wait and receive for that timing. Okay, but uh, if, when we read the other accounts, we don't see that. And if you look at our own lives, you know, uh, well, that's it. it. It is it is more a question of faith. It is more a question of uh, a matter of. Uh, you know all those stumbling blocks being removed right? things that wrong thinking maybe lack of understanding fears all those things to be removed out where we are in a place of just receiving so he's not holding back it's a question of what is actually holding me back from receiving right yeah yeah mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, is is tongues a special? Okay, okay. No. Yeah. Okay, we're going to look at that. Okay, just hold on. We're going to look. We're going to study that. When we get into uh, the benefits of praying in tongues, why tongues? We're going to address that very question because that's that's a question from one Corinthians twelve, verse twenty-eight. You know, like uh, it talks about uh, uh, you know, do all pray in tongues? Do all you know? He asks those questions, so we'll answer that. Right? Okay. Um, a few other questions: Do I need to have hands laid on me to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Not really. Okay. Should I, you know, should somebody lay hands and pray and only then? Um, no, not because we see both, right? People were being, uh, people did lay hands on others and pray. There were also others who just God solemnly poured out his spirit, like in Cornelius' house. So, you know, it both can happen. Um, do I need to be baptized in water before I can pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit? What do you think? So no, so that also we see. You know, people were received the baptism, and then they were water baptized. Some were water baptized, and then 
they, we see um, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay. Okay. So other things about tongues, I think we'll look for it. Uh, I mean, we'll study it a little, uh, uh, like when we go on to the next topic. Okay. Um, so what is the thing that we need to do? We just need to ask and receive, right? Ask in faith and receive. That is it. So don't complicate it. Like maybe uh, for your own selves or for others. You know, maybe you're ministering to others, you're teaching others. Um, you don't have to put so many things, hurdles in front of them. They have to go through, you know, live a holy life, you know, read the word, fast, pray, come, and then, you know, don't put too many, you know, things in front of them. You know, if they believe, if they are believers, if they sincerely accepted the Lord as Savior, faith is what is required. They, they ask and they will be filled. Jesus is the baptizer. You can lay hands, help them. Uh, you don't have to lay hands also, but they will be Okay, so we pray in faith. So, um, okay, so let's look at um, uh, the gift of tongues. Okay, so we are going to uh, study about the, uh, uh, because we have been looking at the baptism of the Holy Spirit, let's uh, uh, start with the gift of tongues. Uh, the next stop is, is going to be the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So we're going to look at, you know, the gifts of the Holy Spirit in general. Um, what are these gifts? Why? And so on. But before that, uh, we'll, let's look at uh, the gift of tongues, right? Okay. Yeah. Can it be? Faith. Fake. Can it be a fake? Can people pretend? Um, Discern, know it. Okay. See, everything that God ordains or establishes, Satan brings a counterfeit. Right? For every real thing, there is a like a counterfeit in the sense. Satan can bring. And uh, like I've I've I like I've not heard, but then I've uh, me personally, but I have also read there that people in you know uh, steeped in witchcraft, black magic and everything, um, you know, they also speak in tongues, you know, like energized by the demons and, and so on. So there is that spiritual counterfeit, you know, um, so that we need to understand. You know, the source is the evil one. There is a counterfeit, which will glorify, you know, maybe the man or whatever, you know, and uh, create deception, not really bring that person close to Jesus, but you know, create deception. So, so that is possible. Yes, there is a counterfeit. Yeah. Um, uh, but as a believer, you know, as a believer, can I, oh, it's already right. As a believer, can I fool myself? Can I, you know, um, that only you will know, right? Uh, you will know, and maybe, you know, this should the Holy Spirit give us discernment, you know, you would know. Um, yeah. But the thing is, anyone who loves Jesus, anyone who's uh, you know, uh, praying in faith, sincerely seeking, will receive. That's the thing. Yeah. Okay, we'll take a break and we'll come back at 10 minutes. Thank you. <laughs> 